beloved in Christ, peace and joy. My name is Reverend Father Januarius Akabi, the assistant priest of Corpus Christi Catholic Church in Sakumodi. Beloved, many people in our time wonder if God speaks to us in our time. And many are confused and ask the question, does God speak to us? Why do they ask this question? If you look at the Old Testament, we see God speaking to Abraham. And he calls Abraham and had child with Abraham. So with Adam and Eve in the garden, he speaks to Moses in the burning bush. He spoke to Samuel as he called him. God spoke to so many people like Elijah, like Ezekiel, even in the vision. And so we don't see these things happening in our days. And so people wonder if God really speaks to us. My dear friends, indeed, God does speak to us. But how does he do that? He does that in simple and ordinary ways. God speaks to us every day. Maybe you may be confused how he does that. I introduce to you the book, God Speaks, the diary of my retreat, my lesson. My dear friend, this is my maiden book. This book comes to explain to us how God speaks to us every day in our time. Maybe today you may not hear a voice speaking to you. Maybe today you may not see an angel come to you face to face to speak to you. But God daily speaks to us. Yes, he does. In our daily experiences. A copy of this book as you read it will unravel that misconception, that doubt in your mind. Get a copy and read the book. God Speaks, the diary of my retreat, my lesson. And you'll come to understand how God speaks to you every day. On the 30th of December, 2018, at 6.30 a.m. and 9 o'clock a.m. at Corpus Christi Catholic Church, we are going to launch this book. I invite you to come. Be part of this lunch. Be part of evangelization. Be part of spreading the word on the word of God. I also invite you to join me in the rest of my work. My YouTube channel, Father January's YouTube channel. You can also download my app, the Gladius, the Sword app. And you can listen to my daily reflections on WhatsApp. Beloved, come and join, promote a good cause. To promote the word of God throughout the world. It is God Speaks, a diary of my retreat, my lesson. Join us on the 30th of December at Corpus Christi as we launch the simple but awesome book that will unravel a lot of things that you need to know about your spiritual life. I will see you there. My dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you to today's edition of Weekly Catechesis with Father January. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, you are welcome. It is weekly catechesis on Father January's YouTube channel. So far, we have tried to learn about what the catechism teaches us on our faith. We are still learning about the creed. We have done the first article of the creed, the second article of the creed, and now we shall look at the third article of the creed. By the way, do you remember the first article of the creed? It says, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We have dealt with all that with the paragraphs associated with it. We've also looked at the second article. And in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. And in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. We have looked at that article and all the paragraphs that comes with it. Today, we want to look at Article 3, Article 3 of the Creed. Do you remember what that is? Simply, it says, He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. We are taking this catechesis from the Catechism of the Catholic Church the official teaching document of the church. If you have yours, you can bring it out so we can learn along. And so today, we take the first paragraph of the Article 3. 
which says, the Son of God became man. The Son of God became man. My dear friends, come to think about it, to think that God took the human flesh and became human like us and became like you and me is something mysterious, something we find difficult to come to terms with. But that is true. God took flesh and became like you and became like me for very, very good reason. It is something that some people find very difficult to understand, that God, walking in the midst of his own creatures, God coming to dwell with man, wow, that is really mysterious. But that is the truth. For our sake, for the sake of our salvation, God came down to live with us. Now we shall look at why did the word become flesh? Remember, Jesus Christ is the word. Why did he become flesh? Let's see what the Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us. This paragraph will come from paragraph 456 to 483. 456 to 483. Why did Jesus, the word, become flesh? Paragraph 456 teaches us this. With the Nicene Creed, we answer by confessing, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. The word became flesh for us in order to save us by reconciling us with God. Beloved, that is the first reason why Jesus, the word, became flesh. We shall look at other reasons, but the first one is that he became flesh in order to save us by reconciling us with God. That is one of the reasons why Jesus came into the world. And this, our catechism, teaches us so clearly that God became man so that he may save us. Jesus came to save us, to unite us with God the Father. And so, once we are sick, our nature demanded that we are healed, fallen to be raised up, dead to be raised again. We had lost the possession of the good. It was necessary for it to be given back to us. Close in the darkness, it was necessary to bring us to light. Captives, we awaited a savior, prisoners, help, slaves, a liberator. Are these things mere or insignificant? Did they not move God to descend to human nature and visit it since humanity was in so miserable and unhappy a state? That is our quest. That because we have sinned and are in a miserable state, we needed God to come and save us. And so his son took flesh and became like us. Number two, why Jesus Christ, the word, became man. The word became flesh so that we might know God's love. Number one, he came to save us and to unite us with the Father. Number two, that we may know God's love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. For God so loved the world, that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Beloved, that is the second reason for the word becoming flesh, that we may know the love of God. Number three, the word became flesh to be our model of holiness. Jesus, the word, became flesh so that we may see what it means to be holy. We may have an example to follow when it comes to holiness. And so Jesus comes as a model so that we can have an example to follow. And that is why he becomes man. Number four. The word became flesh to make us partakers of the divine nature. For this is why the word became man. And the Son of God became the Son of Man, so that by entering into communion with the Word, 
and thus receiving divine sonship, might become the Son of God. For the Son of God became man so that we might become God, the only begotten Son of God, wanting to make us sharers in his divinity, assumed our nature so that he, made man, might make us gods. My dear friends, this is the fourth reason why God, Jesus Christ the Word, took flesh so that we can share in the divine nature of God something beautiful, something so wonderful, something that we cannot find anywhere, only by the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So wonderful. But let's look at another thing, the incarnation. What is the incarnation? Incarnation seems to be a very big word, but in simple terms, it is God assuming human nature. God assuming human nature. In John chapter 1 verse 14, we read that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That is the incarnation, the biggest mystery of all times, that the creator humbles himself and becomes the creature. And so we read in Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 8, that have this in mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. So beautiful, so nice that God, Jesus Christ, humbled himself, he emptied himself, and took the form of a servant, the form of human beings, so that we may have salvation. The letter to the Hebrews talks about this mystery when he says, Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Lo, I have come to do your will, O God. And so Jesus, by doing the will of the Father, emptied himself. He humbled himself and was obedient unto the Father and allowed himself to be born of human nature. Believe in the true incarnation of the Son of God is the distinctive sign of Christian faith according to 1 John. By this, you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit which confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Anybody who believes that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, assumed human flesh, has the Spirit of God. Such is the joyous conviction of the church from her beginning. Whenever she sings the mystery of our religion, he was manifested in the flesh. Beloved, let's look at another mystery of Jesus, the Word. You know, Jesus now has two natures. Yes, by assuming the nature of man, he also assumes the nature of God. Jesus is not more human than God or more godly than human. He is still true God and true man. He is 100% God and 100% man. And this is what our catechism teaches. In number 464, he says, The unique and altogether singular event of the incarnation of the Son of God does not mean that Jesus Christ is part God and part man. Nor does it imply that he is the result of a confused mixture of the divine and the human. He became truly man while remaining truly God. Jesus Christ is true God and true man. And this is what our faith teaches. This has been a heresy in the church before. Arius taught that, no, he can't be God and he can't be man. And so in that conference, in that meeting in Constantinople, it was firmed up in the Council of Nicaea in the year 325 when Arius' heresy was condemned 
by this teaching that the Son of God is begotten, not made of the same substance, which in Greek is called homoousius. The homoousius means that he is begotten and he is not made, and he is of the same substance with God the Father. And later on, Nestorius also came with another heresy, which was also condemned by the church. Beloved, now as we look at the nature of God, Jesus, the Son of God, becoming man, it is a mystery. It is very hard for us to believe, but that is the truth. He is still the Son of God, the God-man, the God who is divine but takes the human nature but does not reduce in his godly nature. By having the human nature, he has intellect, he has his will, and he uses his will and his intellect freely to die for us. My dear friends, this is the mystery that we have in the church, the mystery of the only begotten Son of God, who is 100% God and 100% man, who came to die for us, who came that we may have life, who came to be for us a model, a model of holiness. Let us put our faith, let us put our trust in this word of God. He who alone is our God, the God who assumes human nature and comes to save us, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Beloved, we are still looking at the third article of the creed. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. And we've just looked at the first paragraph of this article. I'm grateful to bring this to you, and I hope you will like it and you will share it with other friends. You can send us your comment as well. Remember, my dear friends, we are also in the season of Advent, preparing for Christmas. And so I believe this teaching will be of very good and important use for us as we reflect on the coming of our Lord and Savior. Stay blessed. Be true Catholic.